Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor and today I'm going to talk about the dark side of the INFJ, the shadow. Okay, so fun topic, right? The problem with the shadow is, and this is something I've come to notice in my life, it always shows up after the hero. So if the hero comes up and does its thing, then the demon always comes afterwards. It's like uh, the hero opens the door and then the demon goes and slams it shut again. So that's how uh, the story of the psyche works. We open doors and then we shut them down again, uh, often because we start feeling vulnerable. So what's the pattern? Why do we start feeling like crap? Why does our mood shift so strongly? Why do we go from good days to bad days? Why do we suddenly have these massive mood swings? Why do we suddenly get so aggressive? Why do we get so angry? Where does it come from? What is the shadow? How do we confront it? So this video is for any personality type, but I will be focusing today on the personality type of the INFJ, the introverted, intuitive, feeling and judging personality type. So when you understand the INFJ, the INFJ has four key heroic archetypes. They are caregivers, they are sages of wisdom, they are creatives and they are utopians or idealists. So those are the four heroic traits of the INFJ, what an INFJ is at their best. And this is what I see in all INFJs I meet. They have these uh, innocent idealism combined with wisdom and desire to help and the desire to create or to make or to shape or develop a vision and make it come into fruition. So what happens whenever I've been creative? What is it that happens whenever I put up a new video online? What happens whenever I write a new article? Often I change. I change from becoming a creator to becoming a destroyer. What tends to happen whenever I make a video? I get a desire, an overwhelming desire to take down a video or to take down many videos. What happens whenever I write an article? I get this urge to remove another article. I get this urge to say, oh, this thing that I created before, it's terrible. I don't want it anymore. I get into this mood where I go, oh, these ideas suck. Oh, that article sucked. Oh, that video was terrible. So. The novelty and the desire to create new comes with the shadow side, the desire to take down or destroy something that you made or something that somebody else made. So that's the shadow of the creative type. The same goes for a caregiver or a helper, you know, a person that helps other people, the person who puts other people before themselves, the person who goes out to help people who are going through struggles can easily turn into a martyr. How does it happen? Well, when you put yourself in the shoes of putting other needs first, so whenever you're helping another person who's having a bad day, you also end up uh, bearing the negativity of the other person. You absorb the other person's emotions. What often happens is I will help another person who is struggling or who is having a bad day. I'll make their day better. I'll make them smile. I'll make them happy. And then I will go home feeling miserable and I will go home feeling like a martyr. I ended up having to suffer to make their day better. I ended up having to feel bad for them to flourish. I ended up having to put myself on the cross or to make myself into a victim in order to support other people who were feeling bad. So how does it happen? Why does it happen? Why do we act like this? What is the cause that causes us to regress into these more primitive states? Why do we feel this way? The first reason, being creative is hard. Being helpful is difficult. Being a good person is hard work. It's not easy. It's not something you just do. Uh, it's not something just anybody can do out of, of nothing. It's not something that takes zero effort. It's something that actually takes effort. Most people out there, they don't put into the other people the effort necessary to truly help other people. Maybe they say, oh, sorry to hear that, or oh, that's difficult. But most of the time, people don't really invest the energy into actually helping other people. So while we can end up feeling like good people or kind people or people that can be kind, a lot of time we don't have the energy or effort to really put it or make it happen. That's what's... What is true about the caregiving archetype is this uh, principle, universal desire to help other people and to spend energy on doing it, to really, really help another person, to really, really do your best to do something for them, to really go out of your way to fix their problem. It can mean that uh, you end up committing hours of your day, hours that you should have spent on something else in order to fix their problems. So it's not easy, it's not something you can just do, it's not a walk in the park. Of course it's going to drain you, of course it's gonna make you exhausted, of course it's gonna make you stressed. And with that stress, 
the shadow emerges. The guilt that creeps up can be, oh, I didn't help another person enough. Oh, I didn't fix their problem. Oh, they're still unhappy. Oh, the problem is not fully resolved. Now I have to feel guilty. Now I have to feel bad because I didn't really solve their issue. I didn't fix their problem. Maybe I made it even worse. Maybe I screwed up. Maybe I messed up. Maybe I did something I shouldn't have. You know, with putting yourself out there and into helping other people, you also have to bear the blame because you become partially responsible for what they do with it. If they end up taking your advice and if it ends up making them feel worse, then you're the villain. You're going to have to feel bad about this. So that's part of the problem. So while I'm an idealist and a person who is trying to constantly be the best version of themselves, a person who has these high expectations, the person who goes in hoping I will be able to build something, make something of myself, create something, I also go through days of crashing disappointment in myself. Days where I feel like a failure, a fraud, a person who has not been able to achieve anything, a person who is only messing up, a person who only makes things worse. So I have this uh, extreme ability to believe I can do the best thing possible and that I can make things better for myself and other people. And I have these dark days to contrast this where I doubt everything I do and where I feel suspicious towards myself and every part or every aspect of my being. During these dark days, it's very easy to be extremely harsh on yourself and uh, to lash out or to do something dark or negative. A lot of the time, the INFJ's negativity is usually directed towards themselves. They become full-on martyrs. They take on so much blame for everything that's wrong in the world. They feel they are the number one thing in the world that is wrong with the world. They feel that they are the principal fools who never get anything, who never understand, who never have the answers or who are constantly wrong about everything. They feel that uh, their ideas are terrible and that their ideas are stupid and that they should never have had them in the first place. And so they lash out against their own work, they lash out against themselves, they can uh, isolate themselves, remove themselves from other people, uh, they can... Uh, trick themselves that other people will be happier without them. They can uh, basically shut themselves down and uh, their own work and their own ideas completely. Uh, and that's the childish reaction. That's the baby rage. That's the, <laughs> well, that's what babies do, you know. Like when uh, a kid is really upset, that's usually where they go. They go from these, uh, you know, this childish uh, enthusiasm and hope and the innocence, this really extreme version of themselves to this really extremely dark version of themselves. Uh, and of course, when you get older, these things get more easy. Trust me, it's gonna get easier. You know, when I was a teenager, I had this crashing doubt that I don't have anymore. And that's very liberating, knowing that it's gonna get easier, that it gets easier every day, that uh, you start to honor yourself and that you start to recognize these patterns and you start stop giving in to them, and that you recognize that I don't have to honor these impulses. I don't have to take down my work. I don't have to be mean to myself. I don't have to discredit myself for my own ideas. I don't have to doubt my own thoughts, my own head. I don't have to be a martyr or a victim. I don't have to feel these negative emotions they can be there and I can have them and I can struggle with them and I will probably always struggle with them but I don't have to act on them I can recognize they are there and admit to them to other people yeah it's true I do this sometimes yeah I'm sorry I have done that in before in the past yeah I'm sorry I got aggressive or I'm sorry that I got insecure I'm sorry I lashed out at you I do that sometimes when I get into these dark days when this happens and that's the step one, that's the admitting of a bad thing, you know, a person that can admit to a flaw is going to be a lot more easy to deal with than a person that refuses to acknowledge them. Most people, they don't even acknowledge these problems or these spirals and don't even admit to having them in the first place. Or if they have them, they assume they are warranted or natural reactions, that it's natural to do these things. That it's natural to isolate yourself from other people or to hurt yourself or to do these things because they have become so used to it. They have just become so used to it that they think it's something normal when it doesn't have to be and it shouldn't be. Step two is realizing and 
that even if you doubt yourself or even though you don't feel completely happy with how something turned out or how an idea became manifested in reality, that it was still a part of your process. You need to honor your process. Huh, look at these ideas I had. Look at that stupidity I had. Look at these stupid ideas I used to have. Look, that I can't believe I used to believe in these things. But also a smile where you say it. Yeah, I respect myself and I respect the process and I understand where it came from and I understand and I forgive myself for doing it and I am happy for where it led me, you know. In the end, it led me somewhere good. I did it even though I was stupid, even though I was ignorant. I did it and I learned from it and I became better. You know, if I would have kept it to myself, if I would have shut it down before it even started, if I wouldn't have put up those first stumbling videos... I wouldn't have been where I am today and I wouldn't have had that growth. So I'm happy I kept the door open. I'm happy I didn't shut down myself. Step three is your self-appreciation. You know, appreciating your effort, listening to your hard work, recognizing the work you put in, recognizing the effort that goes into whatever you do, uh, recognizing the effort uh, that I put into making the videos I make, the time I spend checking in on myself and making sure I'm the best version of myself possible, recognizing the effort I put in to help other people. Basically just uh, having this moment where you say, oh, good job, Eric, good, nice, I that was really good. Uh, you should feel really proud of that and you should really appreciate that in yourself. I believe that's a particularly difficult pill for young people because I think when you're young, you believe that you're not allowed to feel good about yourself until you're dead. And uh, yeah, then what's the point? If you're not going to feel good about it, what's the point? Anyways, thanks everyone who tuned in and thanks everyone who tuned in to watch my Joker review video a few days ago. I'm really overwhelmed by the positive response and the growth of this channel lately. 50% growth in one week, 50% and so many people, I've never had so many people tune in to watch one premiere at the same time before. I'm honestly amazed and uh, so I want to end this video on a light note. Um, Thanks for watching and enjoy what you're about to see next. Yokered movie the yoke, yokered movie the yoke, yokered movie the yoke, yokered movie the yoker, the trickster archetype, yokered movie the yoke, I have the character the yoker, the yoker when pushed far below the edge. You know? Let's talk about the judging personality type, the yodger. What's the yoke? The yoker. Yokered movie the yoke, yokered movie the yoke, yokered movie the yoke, yokered movie. The Joker, the trickster archetype, Joker, the movie, the yoke, I'm the character, the Joker, the Joker, when pushed far below the edge, you know. Let's talk about the judging personality, the judger. What's the yoke? The Joker, Joker, the movie, the yoke, Joker, the movie, the yoke, Joker, the movie, the yoke, Joker, the movie, the yoker, the trickster archetype, Joker, the movie, the yoke, I'm the character, the Joker, the Joker, when pushed far below the edge.